Kei te tautoko a hau te reo waka moema ti i tēnei ata, i te matua, tēnā koe. Kia koe tā mei hama, me arohia, tēnā kōrua. Kia koe matua, kā noe te mahi aroha, kia koe hoki. Kia tātou katoa, ko tai mai nei ki te waka noe te kaupapa o te rā. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Well, it's quite exciting to be here today, and it's exciting more because I think that more and more we are all beginning to realise that we have lived Wano Ora. It is not something that is separate to us. It is not something that is practised upon us. It is something that we live every day. And I thought rather than make a speech, which I was going to do, but I sat here yesterday and I thought about our whānau at home and I thought about what is important to them. I thought today that I would share with you a story about my darling. I've been married for 53 years. He he's, he's puts up with a lot. But I thought that I would talk about him and his family because far too often I go to Hui and I hear government agencies and others talking about all our weaknesses, all our vulnerabilities, our poor haratanga, all of those things. And I thought to myself, no, I'm going to tell you a story of resilience, of hope and of wano ora. My husband came from a family of 15. His dad was ill and his mother worked in the market gardens of Oha Kuni. All of my brothers and my husband's brothers, there were 11 of them, worked in the market gardens before school and after school so that they could live. And it was as simple as that, so that they could live. When they were 15, they weren't given the choice to go on to university or to higher learning. Their mother pulled them out of school. She put them into apprenticeships, which she chose for them. She determined what each of her sons would do. And off they all went, and they did their apprentices. I met George when I was 16. And he came to Whanganui from Ohakune to do his apprenticeship. By the time I was 18, I was madly in love. I was pregnant, much to the disgust of my family. (laughs) And I married George. And we've had four children, adopted another two. We have 26 grandchildren and 28 great-grandchildren. We've done very well in keeping up the Māori population. (laughs) When when George was going through his apprenticeship, we hadn't really, we we were struggling. You know, we could barely live week to week, to be honest. And I can remember when I used to buy kai, I'd buy kind of enough for three people. You know, it kind of doesn't even bear thinking about today, but that's how we lived. And when George was nearly 21, he was almost through his apprenticeship, and his boss came to see me to thank me for George getting through, because it was a struggle. But however, there was never any doubt that he would get through his apprenticeship. When he was 21, he bought a, um, oh golly, what do you call them? Concrete churner. He bought one of those, and he went into business on his own. And we never looked back. He worked 12 hours a day, every day of the week, and he did well. So throughout our lives, we have known what it's like to go without, to do without, and to work really hard to get what we have today. And I think that a lot of people think that we've got those things because of me, because I've got such a lot to say whereas George has nothing to say. He's, he's very quiet. But about two years ago, or 18 months it was, my darling, who'd worked hard all his life, had a massive heart attack. And four days later, he had a stroke. 
And the hospital told us that there was nothing they could do for him, that he would die. So we sat as a family and we talked and I said, no, we'll take Dad home. If he's going to die, then let him die with a lot of love around him, certainly not in here. So we took him home and our kids gathered around. Do you know what was amazing? My grandchildren, they all came. And what they did was they sat down with my son-in-law and they drew up a plan to get their kōrō well. There was no thought in their hearts that he would die. And they worked and they put this plan together. My grandson who worked here in Wellington gave up his job and he came home with his baby and his partner to live with us so he could help me to care for his kōrō. Do you know, that plan was amazing. The first thing we did with the plan was we went and researched about medicines because he was on about 12 different medicines. He was always sick and feeling very ill. So we went through his medication and we threw out two-thirds of them, eight of them. We suddenly became doctors and nurses as well. <laughs> but we threw out the medication and we decided that we would put him onto natural medic medicines. Over a period of time, um, we could see that, no, he, he was starting to show signs of getting better. And over the last 18 months, he is as normal as he can be, and he must be, because I said to my grandson the other day, God, Kuro's grumpy, and he goes, yeah, but that's normal. So I know that he's definitely getting back to being normal. But really, the essence of my corridor is this, that you and I live wānau ora every day of our lives. It is not something that is separate to us. It is not something that a provider gives to us. It is about the practice we ourselves instill in ourselves to do for ourselves. And I don't think we should ever forget that because we do tend to rely on others. I remember one of our queer, I went home while I was in Parliament and she had her daughter visiting. And I said to her, where are you going, auntie? And she said, I'm going to the specialist. I'm waiting for Te Oranganui to come and get me, to take me. And I said, why are they taking you? She said, because that's what they do. And her daughter was sitting there and I said, so what are you doing? And she said, um... I'll wait here till mum gets back. And I said to her, no, you won't. You will go with your mother because you are the one who needs to know, not the organisation, and you need to be there to support your mum when she gets all the information from the specialist. And, you know, auntie said to me afterwards, you know, dear, I never even thought about it. We've had these people coming into our lives for such a long time that we begin to think that that's normal for us to need somebody else to help us out. And I think that that is something that all of us have got to consider. Do we really need the services that we have going on in our lives? I mean, I listened to Dr Joe Williams and he talked about the way forward was for iwi to form partnerships with the Crown. Well, don't make me laugh. When did we ever get a partnership with a Crown agency? When did the Crown ever respect us and trust us enough to have a partnership with us? You know, that's dream time stuff. And I'm over dreaming. I think that we know, we know now, as we have known in the past, that we've got to do for ourselves. But to stand up, rely on ourselves, rely on our extended whānau to do what we know is the right thing for us. And if the government comes along and is willing to work alongside of us, not on top of us, I think that we can accept that we may need some help. But I don't think that we should ever kid ourselves that any Crown agency will ever have a proper partnership with us. I mean, if we're prepared to be the junior partner, if we're prepared to accept what they say as being the most important, then you go into partnership with whomever. But at the end of the day, we have to trust in ourselves to do what we know to be right. 
We've got to believe in tikka and pono and make those the two guiding principles with which we carry out our lives. I'm really thrilled that Matu is here today because he will never know how much he influenced me politically. By setting out for us the guiding principles of the Māori Party, I knew that I had to behave in a particular way, which wasn't easy for me. But because I knew that he listened to every word that we said and watched everything that we did, I knew that I had to live up to that. So I want to thank you, Matua, for being that guiding light. And you will always be the guiding light for us as a whānau. And I thank you for that. Because what you taught me was that you can be respectful and you can still say the things that you... <laughs> you can still say the things that you want to say. It's about the how you do it. But I hope that you all have a really good hui. I, found, I have to admit that yesterday I found quite difficult talking about frameworks and all of those things all day. Um, you know, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, look here, I'm on the Superdoo board. Len, don't listen to this bit. I'm, I'm on the Superdoo board, but I realised just how much I've lost touch with all of that since I left Parliament. It's only been two years. But, you know, you can get over things very quickly, like a disease, you know, you can... <laughs> You can kind of, yeah, you can, you can move on. But thank you all for coming, and I really do hope that you get a lot out of uh, these, th is it three days? It's another day tomorrow, isn't it? It's not tomorrow, it's just today. Okay, well, I do that another day in. Um, but I, I think that uh, there's so much that we can do when we work respectfully with one another. And um, I'm looking forward to see us moving into the future. And I have to have faith in the future because of those 58 mokopuna that I've got. So thank you, thank you for yesterday, thank you for today, and thank you for the great future that we're all gonna have together. Kia ora. <laughs>